Hey folks, thank you very much for joining me and welcome to the channel. If you're looking for a one-stop solution for multi-cam live streaming, whilst keeping it highly portable, recording that live stream, and then having all the footage from that live stream to re-edit, all from the power of either an iPad or a Mac, and using iPhones as cameras, then this is the app for you. This is video one in a series all about Cinemaker. In this video, we're gonna cover what Cinemaker is and does. We're gonna show you the apps that you need for both iPhone and iPad. We're gonna jump inside the director iPad where you control everything for the live stream and recording. Then I'm gonna show you how to set up your cameras and your audio and then set you up for a live stream, but also show you how to edit the footage from that live stream all inside one app. Then by the end of this video, you should be set up with the basics. And in the series, we're gonna be diving into more advanced features as well as different scenarios. How to set up in those scenarios and the best practices for them. So the first question is what is Cinemaker? Cinemaker is a one-stop solution for recording audio, video, and then live streaming and recording that live stream as well. Not only that, you can add multiple cameras through iOS devices and digital SLRs, add cool things like logos and transitions, and then in the editor, you can edit the footage that was recorded in the live stream to re-edit for whatever purpose you like. Cinemaker is completely free, and you can add two devices, so two iPhones, and you use the Cinemaker Director iPad to control everything. I'm actually doing it live right now. So without any further ado, let's jump into Cinemaker. There are chapters in the description box below if you want to jump into the different parts of this. Let's go. So the first thing we need to do is go and get these apps. For the device that's going to be transmitting either audio or video, it's called Cinemaker Capture. And for the iPad that's going to be controlling everything, it's going to be Cinemaker Director Studio. Both apps are completely free. So when you very first download the Cinemaker Director Studio app on iPad, you're gonna be presented with this. What this shows is the Cinemaker's logo and just says new session. What you need to make sure is the network ID is exactly the same on the iPad than it is on the device that you're gonna be used for your camera or what's called the camera assistance, which is basically your iPhone or your iPad that's transmitting the audio or video. So in the top right hand corner, there's a little pencil and you can change the four digit ID. I just leave it on four zeros, that's what they set and it works. On the left hand side, we've got three little lines, which is our menu. When you click on it, the first thing is you can log into Cinemaker. You've got my projects, local storage, and this is where you can also upgrade the app to the studio version as well. Now, if you click on settings, you can get things like the network ID again. You can set the stream resolution. And a nice little one there is save to camera roll. So once you finish doing a stream, it's automatically recording and it's automatically saving that to the camera roll, which I think is pretty cool. There's a couple of nice advancements there. And if you have an iPad with a keyboard or maybe a separate keyboard right next to you, then you've got keyboard shortcuts, which you can access just here. There's also some streaming advanced settings. So if you go into them, you've got things like advanced the airplay audio playback. You can change the video bit rate. It's quite basic. It's just low, good, better or best. And there's a couple of settings there for both YouTube and Facebook. So let's go back to the main page. At the bottom here, you've got your saved projects. And if you log into a Cinemaker account, you can actually save them to iCloud, which is really, really cool. What that means is, let's say you created this on your iPad and you are sending the edit over to someone else to go and edit. They can pick that up at iCloud at the other end. But locally, you can have a couple of projects and then what you can just do is set a brand new one. So let's go into a brand new one now. We just click new session, and then this is our main window for Cinemaker. So you join us here in Cinemaker, and there's a couple of different things and I'm gonna take you through them now. Once you create a new session, then we're in this session, and to get out of it, it's just up here, exit session. As you can see right now, I'm recording. So there's a record above me, it just tells you you're actually recording or you're live streaming. Over here, we've got the battery single and the time. It's actually really useful. A couple of other live streaming apps and video editing apps actually get rid of this. It's actually useful to know in case your device is gonna die during the live stream. Over on this side is where all our media and all our settings are for our camera, our audio, and also things like our transitions, and I'll go into that in a second. Right down there is a record button. It's actually got a red stop sign, but it's actually recording at the moment. Then on this side down here, you've got two buttons. One is to connect cameras, and the other one is to create a virtual camera. On this side, there's only one button, and it's to reset the focus and exposure on the camera that you're using. Speaking of cameras, below that you'll notice it says iPhone 12 mini, and that's what I'm using right now. All you have to do is download the Cinemaker Capture app, open the app itself, make sure it's on the same session ID, so mine's set to four zeros, I'm sure yours will be as well, and it's four zeros on the iPad, 
and then it just connects. It uses your Wi-Fi router to send the information through. There's no IP settings to worry about and it just works. On the iPhone 12 mini you'll see that that is camera one and next door to that it shows you the Wi-Fi signal for that camera and also the battery for that camera. Again really really useful especially if that battery is getting low. Now next door to that is where you would normally put your second camera. I've only got one camera connected for this first part and you can see next door to that it says upgrade to studio to connect more cameras. Cinemaker is free and allows you to connect two cameras completely for free using the iOS app called Cinemaker Capture. And then if you wanna connect more cameras, then you upgrade to their studio edition. Now, this is the camera setup that I've got. As I say, this is the mini, it's just sitting in a tripod right now. Fourth wall moment, this is the actual thing that I'm using right now. You can see here, I've got Cinemaker up and running. Now the main controls are all here and this is where you're gonna change things over. So first of all, we've got media. This is where you can add things like text, media, if you've got like a logo that's PNG so you can see through, there's no background on it. Or if you wanna do picture in picture, this is where that happens. The next dial along is the cameras themselves. So this is where you can dial in. I'm using the front facing camera of the iPhone 12 mini. That means I can't see the screen, it's actually pointing away from me. Which means if I had to change in the settings, I'd have to run off and go behind the camera to change them. Not with Cinemaker. What they've done really cleverly is put all the ISO, the zoom, the focus, the exposure, it's all here on the director iPad and I can control it right here instead of actually going off camera. Now I said before I've only got one camera set up so therefore it's JP's iPhone 12 mini and his little down arrow if I click that and you've got the zoom, you've got exposure, duration, exposure bias, ISO, flashlight and we can turn the flashlight on if we want to. You've also got white balance, auto or manual and the focus mode as well. Now I've set the focus to manual so it's focusing on me right now so if I put my hand in front there then it's not going to focus on my hand, my hand's blurry and that's really useful if someone's going to walk in front of the camera if it's in a live environment. The next one is audio and I'm going to do this right now but basically behind the scenes. This is my microphone. My microphone is just here out of shot. There it is there and you can hopefully hear that and I've just got this on a boom arm and that microphone up there is transmitting the audio into the iPhone and we can see that as a representation just right here where it says iPhone mini 12. I've got it set to 100% you can obviously dial that down or if you didn't want this specific camera to pick up audio and you've got another camera somewhere else on stage you could actually set that one. Cinemaker Capture app has a audio or a video option so it can just capture audio if you want it to so you could have it maybe next door to a mixer and plug it into the mixer and just capture the audio separately. The next tab along is chroma so if you've got a green screen and you want to throw the green screen up and you want to put a backdrop on there you can dial that in finally the last tab is wipes and this is transition so if you've got more than one camera and when you go from one to the other you can have anything from minify to cross dissolve and you can set the duration of that so when you tap on the individual cameras it will cross dissolve across to what you've asked it to do now just to show you how easy it is i've got another phone here this is an iphone 10 and I've just downloaded the Capture app to it, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the Capture app. When we launch it, it launches it in sort of landscape mode, and it has a network ID. This iPad is currently set to 0000. So by default, the network ID is set to the same, and it just asks you, what do you want? Do you want it to set it up as a video capture or as an audio capture device? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally select video capture device, and that's it. It's on the same Wi-Fi, and as you can see there straight away, it literally just picked up that that is running and that's operational. That's how easy it is to just bring another camera into this. Now, once we've done this, let me just hold this in a certain way so you're not getting a really weird image. There we go. So I'm just gonna hold this like this for now. Now, I don't have to control anything on the back of this iPad. I can control it all here on Cinemaker. So as it's come up straight away in cameras, you can see there's a zoom mode, the exposure. I can actually change the flashlight. So I put the flashlight on and fly myself. And also we've got the audio here. We've got the audio coming from both devices. I'll turn that completely down because I don't want the audio from this and the microphone that I've got plugged in to the iPhone 12 mini. Now this is where the last part of this section comes in, which is wipes. We are currently on the orange one, which is iPhone 12 mini. What's really nice about Cinemaker is it color codes everything. So you know pretty much straight away that orange is the first camera and purple is the second camera. So if I now tap on the purple one, it goes straight to it. Hi, uh, but if we go back over, you can see it goes straight away. Now we haven't set any durations for the cross dissolves or anything like that. So if I set the duration now for say half a second, and then I tap the purple one again, you can see it moves over nice and smoothly. 
I can change it over to say minify for example and we minify from one to the other and this is great and there's a couple of others things like slide down and then you've also got things like minify and cross dissolve so it crosses over and it's got the duration there for half a second now as soon as i stop recording it will stop recording both devices and we go straight into the editor where it's got the feed for the audio and the video from both devices so the other section certainly for musicians is not the video that's kind of taken care of it's the audio now earlier on in the video i showed you the microphone that i've got and that's just going into the iphone 12 mini i'm using the 3.5 mil to lightning adapter just to plug that in but with cinemaker on the audio side you might just want to capture the audio or you want to capture the audio and the video together but you don't want it to be the microphones from the actual device this is where something like this comes in this is the apple lightning to usb 3 adapter now with this what you can do is you can plug in a usb mix or an audio interface. I've done many videos about connecting this adapter into an iPhone or an iPad, but it's a lightning adapter, so you just plug it into the port and it gives you USB on the other end for plugging in mixers and audio interfaces, but also gives you the power so you can keep this powered. Now, Cinemaker is clever enough to understand when one of these is plugged in and something else is plugged into it, like an audio interface or a microphone, and on the Cinemaker Capture app, it shows internal or external microphone. Then on the Director app, you can control the volume. So let's say I have a USB mixer, like the Behringer one I've used in the previous videos. We plug everything into that and then using this as a camera or just an audio capture device, then we send the signal out to the iPhone. Now the alternative, if you're looking to do something like interviews or podcasting and you just want to use a really good microphone, there are loads of microphones on the market that even some of them have a lightning connector and go straight into an iPhone. The Cinemaker Capture app can utilize that and even if it's just a normal jack connector, you can just simply use the lightning to 3.5 millimeter AUX cable. Just remember the right cable that you need as on AUX cables you have TRS and you also have TRRS. So for example, the out of this microphone is TRS and then it goes TRRS into the adapter, which then goes into the iPhone. I'm not trying to confuse you. Now the beauty of this is control. And what I mean by that is I can actually take this and have it maybe on a stand right next to me whilst I'm performing. And we've got the audio coming in here, or it could be coming in from another audio source feeding straight into the camera. You can change the exposure of the camera, the zoom, you can change everything for the audio, make sure the audio levels are correct. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna click the big red button at the bottom there. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take you to a page with four different options on. You can record locally, so you can record the video Video, just like I'm doing right now or you can send out a live stream so you can send the live stream out to Facebook or YouTube so if you want to use something like restream for we're sending it out to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time you could send it to an RTMP link as long as you've got the right settings and then send it out to that or you could send it out to a private RTMP link if you're going to do something like a paid event like through Evo or your own website now the really clever part of Cinemaker is once you finish the live stream or you finished recording once you hit stop on the iPad what it does is it saves the session locally to the device and then you are straight into the editor what this means is if I did a live stream but I want to utilize that footage for later on maybe repost it onto Facebook but it was exclusively on YouTube I could make sure things like the camera changes or the timings of when media came up was absolutely nailed then it can render that and create that as a video for you to be used wherever you like Hi, so I've just moved two iPhones onto the table here and we've got the iPhone 10, which is this one here, and then the 12 mini is over there. On this setup, it's set up with the 10 as camera one and the 12 as camera two. So I'm just gonna pretend to tap this one and look over here, but I've actually forgotten to do it. And then I'm gonna move back over to this camera. And there's a reason for this, and that's because maybe that would affect the live stream, but when I re-edit it, I can actually change this over. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So you join us here in the editor, and the editor has two major things that have changed. This time, we've got on the bottom left-hand corner, we've got a scissors, and we can cut and trim this entire section if we wanted to. The other option we've got is we've got an override. So if we want to override something, we have to press this button, and it asks us what we want to override. You can override the cameras, the audio, and the media. So we could bring a logo in, for example, that we didn't have before, but the one I wanna do is the actual camera. So I'm gonna click record and play. Hi, so I've just moved two iPhones on. And I'm gonna stop that there. You can see there that the iPhone 10 is in orange and the iPhone 12 is in purple color. So I'm just gonna to pretend to tap this one and look over here, but I've actually... 
So this is the point where I should have actually tapped the iPhone 12 mini and I didn't do it, I did it, did it deliberately. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move that to there and we're gonna tap this one. I'm gonna hit record. I wanna look over here, but I've actually forgotten to do it. And now I'm gonna move back over to this camera. And now I'm gonna move back over to the first one and hit record. There's a reason for this. And that's because maybe that would affect the live stream. So now you can see a purple bar in between the two orange ones because we've made that re-edit, which is fantastic. So now we've got that set and that's the way we want it, for example. Up in the top right hand corner, there is now a new out button, which is here. So we can export this movie to the camera roll and social media. You choose the bit rate, whatever you want it to be. And then when you click render movie, it says, please be patient. This will take a few minutes. And there we go, our video was saved. Cinemaker knows this, and therefore you now have the option to upload that video to YouTube or Instagram. So that is the overview of Cinemaker, but we don't stop there. This is actually gonna be a series of videos covering everything that Cinemaker does. In the next couple of videos, I'm gonna be showing you some more advanced settings with the basic package. Then I'm gonna be showing you the studio version, which is the full blown version of Cinemaker and its advantages. Then we'll have a couple of videos setting up for a couple of different scenarios, whether you're setting up here at home doing a live stream, or maybe you're doing tutoring, or if you're setting up on stage in a pub or a venue. If you're setting up for podcasting, or you're setting up for an interview. And finally, pub, club, and venue, owners we're going to be doing a video all about that where you guys actually take control of Cinemaker maybe you want to live stream all the entertainment that's coming to your venue and then use that as promotional tool to get people in so as this is a series of videos myself and Cinemaker have come together to create this series for you we've created a special link that's on the screen now and that is an affiliated link for me and that helps pay for this series but at the same time it gives you all the information you need to know about Cinemaker about Cinemaker director the new one which is Cinemaker make a zoom director and you can use it for zoom calls and also the studio version as well so click the link have a look at Cinemaker and then thank you very much to Cinemaker for helping us out with this series thank you very much for watching folks and we'll see you on the next one